day one for you should be, you know, what happens if this actually works out? Like what happens if this actually becomes, you know, something that connected billion people and then walk your way backwards of like, what do I actually need? What happens if this fails is not as interesting as like, what happens if this actually works? So if you have the mission, what's the strategy, right? Okay. So the strategy is building the right infrastructure for the web. It's being used by every startup, every Fortune 500 company, every government, you know, like you really need to, the same way WhatsApp is being used by every, you know, uh, person. And then uh, you can go, your, go, go, even, go even deeper and say, okay, what's the company-wide objectives? And, and, you know, of course, you know, building the developer uh, environment and, and grow, you know, deeper and deeper into enterprise and, and infrastructure. And then you can go, you know, smaller into business objectives, you know, make enough money to, uh, to offer our product for free, right? So that's like the key business objective and giving something away for free is how you can go back to your mission and say, okay, how do we reach a billion people? Well, it's pretty hard to reach a billion people if you have a product that costs $15 a month, right? That's just, that's just really hard to customers, plan engineering, uh, assign the best people and can just really consistently ship and fix bugs. Um, I think if you're onto something and you, you keep following that, I think you'll be fine. And then individual projects is also, you know, like um, you, you chuck them down into, you know, small things that you can actually give to someone and say, okay, publish 100 videos, publish this, build this, uh, you know, more endpoints than, than others. And um, yeah, so everything at the end of the day goes back to this kind of like pyramid. Why are you open source? And there's many reasons, um, compliance and self-hosting and white labeling and developer friendliness, but um, I'm at a point where I say you actually ship faster because you empower your users to help fix things or build products and build features. And this is true for Calicom, for Documenzo, for Formbricks. If you empower your, your users to become contributors and they can actually, you know, come in and, and contribute and maybe even get paid with, you know, Agora. Um, and I think that's just you're beating every other company that has just two engineers. You have two engineers and 500 contributors, right? Mm. Still need kind of like a, a red line, you know, like this is where we go. This is also like, you need to become very good at saying no, because if you have a community, there's also people who want to take your product in a different direction. Having a really good core team that just really focuses on, on speed, like on just getting shit done, uh, beats everything. Um, and I think that's true for every startup. Um, and so when you're an open source, I think you, you, you can have a superpower, but of course also communities can be distracting. So make sure you, you really have your own way of thinking. You don't know the problem. You don't have the problem. And if you don't have a problem, you can't solve it easily as if you have a problem and you solve it, right? Um, and so I'd be very, very careful of following uh, a, a technology if you don't know the problem at its core and to me going back to you know my previous business i was building a marketplace to connect recruiters with with employees or contractors and i had no good scheduling infrastructure and so the reason i built this open source repo is i'm building a marketplace i don't want to deal with time zones and calendar apis and scheduling and cancellations and rescheduling and video i don't want to be dealing with that so let me open source this so everyone can like contribute and help and use this thing while I focus on my hiring marketplace. That was the idea. And if I didn't have this hiring marketplace, I wouldn't have thought of scheduling infrastructure, which, you know, now I spend my waking hours thinking about. Um, and so for me, it was really easy to, to figure out, okay, what do I need? How do I build this? What, what do other people need to, to get to the point where I am today? Um, the interesting thing is now when you have a product, now you can think of like, okay, how can I infuse things with, with like a large language model? For example, we, we, we recently launched a phone, a phone agent that can, you know, make bookings in my calendar. That's freaking dope. But if you don't experience the pain first and you wake up tomorrow and say, let me build a large language model to interact with a calendar because I think it's kind of cool. You will never fall in love with the problem. You'll never understand the problem as much as someone who, who works from like first principle. Just coding and shipping things is way more easy than finding the right co-founder. So mm -hmm. yeah, how, how, do, how do you like detect like the ideal characteristics of ideal co-founder market fit? How did you did it back your, back your time? I think it's, um, it's probably as hard or harder than uh, finding a girlfriend if you're single. <laughs> And when you're single, it feels like you'll never get a girlfriend because it's like, 
it's so hard and it's, it's so it's 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 really i mean uh, speaking for myself i don't know about the others in the room but and then it happens and you find the right person and you just know it and you're like okay wow this is we're really vibing and after six months you're still vibing and after a year you're still vibing i sent a mass email to everyone on the waitlist saying like hey there's a chance i'm going to shut this project down i have no time um is anyone here who wants to like take over and, and so one of these people is bailey my co-founder today i had the single thing i told him like if this ever goes crazy and you want me as like a full-time person right like let's incorporate this and do 50 50 split and like i'll i'll catch up with you like if even if you spend six months working before um i'll, I'll probably figure out how to catch up and so as things turn out he launches it on product time and it goes completely crazy and we were like okay should we do this should we incorporate should we you know build a business and, and you know go after this opportunity and he's like yeah let's fucking do it and so um i met him about a year after in person so we just really met online and we just like you know if you have two people in this room you could be co-founders right if you just end up working together and fighting um the good thing that people don't realize is you have vesting and really use that finding product market fit is really inevitable as long as you keep trying very fast with many projects so this is also true for indie hackers and bootstrappers but i've probably launched a hundred products and three or two of them worked out so there's like a two percent success rate and i think this is true for every to me i i love the the comparison to like playing the lottery because that's actually true some 19 year old and remember bailey was also very young when we, we started this may play once and win the lottery like like chances doesn't care how much you've played in the past but the question is how expensive is your ticket and the ticket is literally free like for you it is literally free if you as as long as you pay your rent and you you, you, you have food on the table um, so the job is to play as many tickets as you can, right? So um, you build something, you launch it, it doesn't take off, fine, shut it down. Mostly believe in like fundamental pivots where you try as many things as you can in a good short amount of time. Hey everyone, this is the first commercial open source office hours. I'm, I'm happy to do them every Friday. I'm actually completely booked into way until May. I'm also live on Agora, so that's pretty cool. Uh, it's like a developer first streaming platform. Here, co founder of Cal.com. Um, been in probably in startups for like the last 12, 14 years. Not a huge expert, you know, I've never taken an open source company public like GitLab, but uh, I, I know at least the early stage and I'm really interested in the early stages of, of companies as well. Um, and so I think this is a great place for you to ask, um, you know, product ideas or product feedback, fundraising advice, navigating, you know, large communities or, or small communities and um, everything else. So I think we can just start.